Today on Upfront. Wisconsin feeling the effects of Trump's tariffs. Next, U.S. Senator Ron Johnson on why he says the president should have to ask Congress first. Plus, I'll ask him if we're really safer after the Singapore summit, as the president claims. And Democratic candidate for Governor Malin Mitchell, why he's embracing the title of union boss. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. We are now less than two months away from the August 14th primary, a contest that will whittle the Democratic race for governor from 10 candidates to one. In a large field that's been pretty disciplined so far in terms of holding back from attacking each other, the gloves are beginning to come off a bit. Candidates Tony Evers and Matt Flynn hammered each other over Act 10 and Evers' plan to pay state lawmakers an amount comparable to a first-year school teacher. Meanwhile, a candidate who rose to prominence during Act 10 is now embracing the moniker of union boss. Malin Mitchell is head of the Professional Firefighters of Wisconsin, and he joins us now on Upfront. It's good to have you back on the program. Good to be here, Mike. Good I, to see you. I'll ask you about that, that title in just a moment, but I want to get your sense of how this race uh, looks and feels to you at this moment in time. Well, from where I'm standing, it looks and, and feels good for our campaign. Uh, we, we have secured a lot of key endorsements. Uh, Congresswoman Gwen Moore has endorsed as long as many other uh, uh, um, labor unions, um, SCIU, UFCW, Machinists, the Wisconsin AFL-CIO, the Steelworkers, of course, my firefighters. Um, and a lot of people will say, well, of course, Malin Mitchell has labor yeah, support. Labor. But labor, is, they're not corporations. They represent people. Uh, so it's not just having labor support or having uh, union support. It's about having their members behind you. And I've not only asked for their support, but I've actually stood with their members and having day in the life of each one of their members and still um, in the process of doing that. I've sat down with the home health care provider and seeing what she has gone through day in and day out. I have went to the tannery here in Milwaukee and seen the hard backbreaking work that those folks do. So uh, labor represents people. So I'm, I'm happy to have Wisconsinites here in the state and have them coalesce around one uh, campaign. So, so it was interesting. At, you had an event on Monday, organized labor turning out to show their support for you. At that event, you said you embrace this this moniker of union boss. This is what the Walker uh, folks have said about you. Mayla Mitchell is a union boss. Why are you embracing that? Isn't that, uh, they obviously think it has a negative connotation. Well, they do, but they, what, what a, they call me a union boss. They're going to call me something, right? But they call me a union boss, and if being a union boss is after I take off my turnout coat, I go and work on behalf of men and women who run into burning buildings. After I take off my turnout coat, I go and work on behalf of men and women who respond to medical emergencies around our state for their hours, wages, working conditions, and their health and safety. Then you can call me or dom me, whatever you want. That's helping people of the state, and that's what I want to do as governor. I want to get out there and help every Wisconsinite have wages that are fair and equitable and raise them, uh, have family sustaining jobs. I want to have health care for every person in the state, and I want to make sure that every child has the opportunity to, to, to be successful by actually fully funding K-12 through education and, and so, going a step further. And so this election cycle you think will be different? Why? I mean, unemployment now is 2.8 percent in this state. Uh, the governor says, um, look, things are going pretty well right now. Why do you think it's going to be different than it was, for example, in 2012? Well, we need a different type of candidate, and that's why I'm running. We need not only someone that's different but unique. Um, the governor's got to talk about us having a low unemployment rate, which 2.8% is relatively low. Fifth lowest in the country. Yeah, but what, what's an unemployment rate when people are working two or three jobs just to make ends meet? When people have to wor worry and struggle how they're going to pay for their health insurance or their car note or how they're going to put food on the table. You shouldn't have to go to fish fry on Friday and wonder how you're going to pay for it on Monday. And that's what we're seeing in our state. So a governor can go around and paint a rosy picture, but I actually go out there and talk to Wisconsinites every day. And not necessarily people that are always agreeing with me, but people are struggling, and we need um, a governor that's going to take care of common people. We have a mantra in my campaign that's together we rise. And it's working with people from both sides of the aisle. It's working with all type of Wisconsinites to actually work together so that we all have the freedom. Uh, to thrive in this state. Last time you were on this program, we did talk a bit about Foxconn. It was in the early stages. This is back in November of last year. Uh, it seems to, to observers that the Democrats have doubled down on their opposition to this deal. What is your current position on Foxconn? Do you wish to do as Matt Flynn uh, does, uh, try and stop it in his tracks if he's elected governor? Where are you right now on that issue? Um, I, I haven't wavered. I haven't changed in my uh, 
um, filling on Foxconn. Uh, Foxconn's a bad deal. Um, we should never give four and a half billion dollars to a foreign company when we're not taking care of our people here at home. When we have the second worst roads in the country. When we have a K through 12 public education that's struggling. When we have people that can't even get a raise at their, at their jobs or that they're struggling to live day to day. So we need to take care of home first. But I'm a realist. And what's really happened in our state is that the bill uh, has been signed. Um, the bill has been passed, quite frankly, um, with not much transparency, but it's been passed. Uh, the contract has been cut by Weedick. So now what a governor can do is actually make Foxconn accountable to the taxpayers. And that's what I want to do. And, and by accountable, what, what would you do to, to make well, them accountable? I, I think you have to go in and look at a contract and restructure it and that make sure that if, we're, if they're going to be hiring three to 13,000 people, that the first people that get those jobs are people here in the state of Wisconsin. And that the first people to get those jobs are people that currently don't have jobs and that have low paying jobs. And make sure that we are actually working like they did at Buck Stadium, like they did at Northwestern Mutual, where they're hiring people that have lower socioeconomic status than others. And that should all be people here in the state of Wisconsin. We also got to make sure that they, they are true to their word, which Foxconn in the past has not been. They have a record of not doing what they promised to do. So making them accountable to taxpayers, making sure that all the provisions in the contract are satisfied, making sure if they're going to pump 7 million ga gallons of water out of Lake Michigan, which I do not agree with, but it's been signed, that that water, when it goes back in, is clean, which I don't know how they do that, so we have to fully fund our DNR. There's a lot of things we have to do in order to make Foxconn a uh, corporate real partner here in the state of Wisconsin. Before we go, I want to ask you about something else you said in the last week um, in, in a, a set of remarks. You said, it's not lost on me that I'm raising my black kids in the worst state in the nation to be black. I am running for governor to change that. What, what would you change to change how African Americans fare in the state of Wisconsin? Well, there's a lot of things we have to change. Give me a couple examples. We have the highest African American male incarceration rate in the country. We have the ability to put about 16,000 people in jail. Right now we have over 24,000 folks that are in prison. Um, we are putting people behind bars for minor um, drug offenses. We need to stop doing that. Um, we need to create opportunities on, in places that need them. Um, while the governor is giving $4.5 billion to a foreign company, we need to make sure we take care of people here in the state of Wisconsin uh, that, quite frankly, look like me and people that, have, that, that are not the same color as me across this entire state that have not had the opportunities put in front of them. So when it comes to the African-American male incarceration rate, I want to tackle that head on. We do that by um, stopping minor drug offenses. We do that by um, banning the box uh, with, the, with the F on, in front of the application. I think we have to get rid of truth in sentencing. It's not doing what it was intended to do. It's actually having the reverse effect, and it's actually overcrowding our jails. Um, we need to get people that need treatment the treatment they need, and the state can provide that. Being addicted is not a crime. So we have many folks in the, in the penitentiary right now in jail that want to be part of the earned release program so they can get out and have supervision. Um, we need to look at revocations. Our recidivism rate in the state is the highest. We need to change that. Um, so there's a lot of things we can do actually to, to, to make our state um, a bit available for everyone to actually be successful. Mayla Mitchell is uh, one of the Democratic candidates for governor running in the August primary. It's good to have you back on the program. Thanks for having me, Mike. Appreciate it. Our editorial partner, WISPolitics.com, has a complete guide to the 2018 race for governor, which includes candidate interviews and TV ads. You'll find it all at WISPolitics.com. Coming up next on Upfront, Trump's tariffs. Some in Wisconsin are feeling the effects of them. I'll be talking to Senator Ron Johnson about his efforts to make the president ask Congress first before imposing some tariffs. Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company.